Hey, hey, and welcome to the Work Smarter, Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, a.k.a. The Design Ninja. This is the place where you can develop your ninja skills with Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign and more. And in this movie, I'm going to respond to a comment via YouTube that I did feature a couple of days ago on my blog at TonyHarmer.expert. Okay, and the question was relating to subdividing a pie. Now, this is the scenario I used to answer that. So I've got a pie here of which there are three major values. So 60% of one thing, 25% of another thing, and 15% of another thing. Now, of that 60%, there are four values that make that up. So the scenario I used on my blog were media titles in a sci-fi library. So for example, a whole chunk, 60% of that was Star Trek, 25% of that was Star Wars, and 15% of that were Doctor Who things, just for argument's sake. Could be anything, hamsters, monkeys, whatever you want. But let's just say that 20% represented values from Star Trek, the original series, and then 10% of Star Trek The Next Generation and 40% of Deep Space Nine and 30% of Voyager, just for argument's sake. If you don't like Star Trek, I don't particularly care. Watch whatever you like, monkeys, hamsters, whatever. But those are the values that I'm going along with just here. Okay, so I want to show both things, the major and the minor component values. So what I'm going to do is, with my pie just here, I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm then going to tap S to scale that up because I want the major values here to be on the outside, I've decided. I do it the other way around on the blog, but that, again, doesn't matter. Preference, whatever you want to do. I'll then hit return and I'm going to type a value of 120 just there. I love the transformation tools that you can do that. It's automatically at the center. There you go. There's my pie nicely scaled up. I'm then going to paste down the original chart just here. And then, because my smart guides are on, and this is aligned to the center of the artboard, it makes it dead easy for me to drop that in place. So now to carve up those values, what I'm going to do is right-click on here and go to the data for this pie. And I'm actually going to clear out the original data just here. So let's get rid of all of that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and start. So how do you carve this up? Well, it's actually relatively simple, especially in this case. So we've got 60%. So what is 1% of 60? Well, it's 0.6, right? So 10% is 6 and so on. Makes it really simple. Of course, your values might be slightly different and you may well have to resort to El Calculator to do that or accept the nearest possible uh, value, whatever. That's what I'm doing just here. So the first value there is 20%. So if 10% is 6, that means this first value is going to be 12. I'll tab through to the next column. So 10%, that's dead easy. That's going to be 6. Just there, tab through again, 40% is going to be 24, just there, okay, and 30% is going to be 18. So that's the 60% nicely carved up. Then we just need the two remaining major values because they're not going to be subdivided. So we'll do 25 just there, okay, followed by 15. And then we'll apply that like so. And you can see how that has divided that up nicely. All I need to do now is basically to colour this lot up. Okay, well, I've got this red colour in my swatches just here. I've also got the colour uh, for these two. So I could actually get those things out of the way first. If I just drag the colours onto those things. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. If I get those on, they're sorted. Now I'm going to click on this red swatch just here. Whoops-a-daisy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just target that. Actually, I'll colour the other two in in a minute. doesn't matter. I'm going to use my colour guide panel just here to get other colours. And my direct selection tool, its cousin, the group selection tool, lives just underneath it. Then I'm going to click, first of all, away. And then on these individual pie slices. And you can see how I can get in here and just colour these up really, really quickly. Maybe I want something slightly darker just there, like so. 
Okay, so I can see how they're all nicely divided up. Okay, then I'll just go back to the swatches panel as before and just drag those two back on just there to color that lot up. Perfect. Now they're done, all I need to do is draw the things for my compound path to make that into a donut. So I'll just get the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw a rough ellipse there and drag that into place. I love that you don't have to jump out and pick up a selection tool anymore. You can do it all with that stuff just there. So that's really nice. So that's going to be the sort of outer part there of uh, my shape. So I'm just going to bring that in like so. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to make it the smaller one just for a minute. So I'm going to do that just there. So that's going to be the smaller one. And then I'm going to switch drawing mode. I'm going to hold down shift and tap D. That switches to the draw behind mode. Okay, I'm going to deselect that, get my ellipse tool again, and then just drag that out like so. Okay, so you should be able to see, right, that I've actually got that. It's gone right the way behind the graph. So let me just apply that like so and bring that further forward. That didn't work terribly well, did it? It does that sometimes. Hilarious. Do you know what? I'm going to use the layers panel. It will be quicker. So I'll just bring that up underneath that one. Perfect. Because I'll be using this in a minute anyway. So I'll keep it there. I'm going to select those two things. Do Command 8. That's Control 8 on the PC that makes that shape. Then I'll select all of that stuff and do Command 7 or Control 7. Okay. Just to turn that into a clipping mask. And there we are. It's still completely editable. General tip, if you want to select these things, you don't have to expand them. Use the layers panel. Twirl open your layer. See all of the content here. There's that clip group like so. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to get rid of the strokes here. What I could do is target this graph just by using the proxy area there. Now, my stroke at the moment is in back. You can see that just there, but I'm going to tap X to bring that to the front, which means I can kill off all the strokes just by hitting the slash key like so. And then I can select the next graph and just hit the slash key to kill those strokes off as well. And also when you've got things there selected, if the data needs to change, it is just a matter of right clicking there while it's selected. And there you go. That's it. We are done. That's how you can create a subdivided look to show the components of a major value. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It does help me in getting more time to make these things. Reach out to me via Twitter because, as you can obviously see here, I do respond to comments. Follow my Facebook page. All of those details will be along in just a moment. Please do keep on watching. Spread the word. And until next time, sayonara.